Welcome everybody. Sorry for the shaky camera there. I'm terrible at holding cameras. Obviously that's why I'm not a photographer or a cameraman. But this is my project. This is Project Stay Puff. My wife named this vehicle uh, after the Marshmallow Man from freaking Ghostbusters. It is a flawless 2003 Jeep Grand Cherokee Limited, fully loaded, uh, with the 4.7, notoriously crappy V8. I love the 4.6 liters and the 4.7 liter V8s. I think they're the best displacement produced. Chrysler's got a terrible design, though, with that stupid center pulley, which is the center cam chain pulley. Uh... I deal with a lot of the 5.4s and the 4.6 Ford engines. This is my first 4.7 liter Chrysler motor that I will be building. But I do build a lot of performance Ford engines, so if anybody out there is looking for someone that wants to build up their engine, give me a holler. I'm your man. Uh, I do most of my stuff bare, bare line stealth mode, so I try to reuse a lot of the factory components, heads, etc. I'll have them bored out and oversized valves, get some coits or some crane, whatever whatever your favor is, I'll do it. But right now, this is my wife's car. This engine has, ooh, just shy of 200,000 miles on it. Uh, this was a one-owner vehicle, accident-free. This, ve this engine compartment was disgusting. It was as bad as this right here. Yummy. The whole entire engine compartment was like that. As you can see in some of the spots that I've missed. Yeah, those nasty brake lines are getting replaced. But, I'm getting this engine. I'm going to be removing the block. We're going to be, uh, I'm going to show you guys all about the 4.7 liters. This is just a basic for all you first timers. I'm not a technical term kind of guy for auto mechanics. I am ASC certified and trained. Uh, it's not my day job. My day job is building houses. But, yep, the reason we did this Jeep is uh, over the 2015-2016 winter, my wife uh, went outside on the coldest day to go head off to work. She went to go start this thing up and uh, the most common problem on these Chrysler engines I find out are sticking valves dropping seats and what was the other one? Oh yeah skipping timing but that's the notorious common problem with any cam chain or belt or anything any engines gonna have common timing problems but yep this one dropped a friggin valve seat so it fucked up this cylinder back here which I've already milled and machined off the piston head yeah I, I got I do a portable I do have portable equipment homemade that does fit in here Sorry about that, got a little bit distracted there, but yeah, this side of the engine's all been done. Give you guys, see if I can give you guys a little sneak peek on what the pistons look like. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that, big fucking brand new. You can see some of the little shavings are still stuck on the sides. They'll all get cleaned off. These heads are, this actual block seat is actually all gonna get freaking milled down. But I don't want any sediment sitting on top of my pistons when they're cleaned off. If they're filthy dirty like this, I could give a flying fuck whatever wants to sit on top of them. Because once these ones are done, they'll get capped off like that. And then the whole block will be removed from the engine compartment. And then it will be the process of trying to get everything else done. Give you guys a quick peek. Here's one of the heads. There's one cylinder, and there's another cylinder, and there's another cylinder. Oh, look at that cylinder. Ooh, starting to look bad. This same exact cylinder on the opposing head is the one that actually dropped the seat, and you can actually see how defined the valve seats are. I would have to say that would probably, I don't know all you other machinists out there, you might agree with me, but I would have to say that's poor valve lap on the actual valve seat. I mean, look how much of a, there's like no lapping. Uh, all the Ford engines I deal with, it's valve to head. You don't see the seat when the valve closes. You, you, you see a fucking hairline. This Chrysler head's terrible. But do you know what? I like it. That means I could put a much bigger fucking valve in there. 
could put a much bigger freaking exhaust valve in, put a much bigger intake valve in. Depending on the threads, hopefully these heads don't have the common thread problems. If you guys know out there, comment on me and let me know if these heads are like the Ford heads and only have four fucking threads for the spark plugs. Hence why all the 5.4 liter Tritons, no one likes them because yes, they do blow their fucking spark plugs out. I have built up a truck. I'll show you guys some pictures later on. I'll try to get that together, but yeah, those are those are my babies. I do love those engines. If you solve the head problem, those Tritons are fucking tanks. But from what I hear from a lot of these uh, Mopar guys, that these 4.7s can be fucking just as badass as the 5.4s. So here's my trial. Everything you see here will all be completely rebuilt and or new with performance or higher quality grade. I've already done some things. I'll show you guys real quick here. I've already started rewrapping the harnesses. I've actually gone in and actually cleaned out the line sets in them. So the lines are actually cleaned out on them. You can see the prongs in the cases. They've all been cleaned off. This one's got some overspray from some primer. I've already started doing the upper core support. There is some nasty rust right here. As you guys can see, the old pitting. But I've cured it all, but this vehicle will be detailed down to, yes, all the bolts are painted, all color matched. This vehicle will be defined, like here's a, here's an airbag brake block, that's a before, here's a Navy airbag brake block, here's an after, they go all detailed in, yeah, even all those, all the little breakings and markings for the machinists is all been color defined, these bolts have all been painted. Only reason I haven't put this one completely back on is because I do plan on pulling out the brand spanking new freaking steering gearbox that I got fucking white paint all over. So now I gotta strip that down, paint it all up, get it back to looking new. But, yep, this is the project. Freaking, this isn't the only custom stuff I do. I do build a lot of custom things. You name it, from garden tractors, custom pulling tractors, to custom vehicles, custom trailers. And just recently I started getting into building complete custom RCs. I'll give you guys a sneak peek on that real quick before I get this uh, video finished. Here's a quick peek guys. This is, vehicle's name is going to be Operation Midnight. Uh, it's a self-loader RC tow truck. Just to show you guys the size, sorry about my camera. That's my hand. I am six foot one, so I do have fairly large hands. So just to show you up against the doors, this is a 100% custom built body. This is not store bought. It is built out of foam and it's got acrylic hardeners in it. As you can see, I've already got drive line hooked up. I did have this chassis up and running with a different front axle. It, uh, yeah, it is a true tow truck. It is going to be all to scale. Everything from here's a custom built sway bar link that you do custom build. That is all hand machined. Let me see if I can get in there and see if you guys can see it a little bit. It's not very thick, but it is all hand machined aluminum. I made all this myself, I cut all this all out myself. With a jigsaw and a file and a grinder and a grinding wheel. No like lathe or machine or anything like that or CNC machine. This is all custom built for my for my own preference. 100% uh, articulating suspension, all pneumatic tires. Um, but yeah, and I already got the paint. It's, a, it's like a midnight green metallic. I do believe it is a Chrysler or possibly even a Honda color. Could be even a G. Actually, you know what? I'm almost positive it could be a GM color. Uh, I think that's the one thing I made unique. It's a Chevy color on a paint on a Ford truck. But this is a resemblance of a 2014. Yeah, I do believe 2014. Ford F450 XL Super Duty Extended Cab. This is a full custom RC. 
Uh, once I am done building this, uh, I mean, it will have all the all the headlights and everything in here. Um, I already, if you guys can see, I already started gusseting this all out. But this will be 100% like working order truck. Steering is will be all put together. This all this linkage is all going to be replaced out. But this is a removable pumpkin cover, so you can get right to the gears. It's all filled with Lucas grease, all sealed, 100% waterproof. Uh, it's even got the camber camber knuckles on it, so that way if you wanted to flip them to get the wheels to have more of a camber, reverse the caster to the camber, then you can actually have more of a camber set up on it, but this vehicle will actually be able to hold. Yes, if I do build it all right, it will have the articulating boom, all that stuff will all be here. This is a self-loader. This doesn't have the big boom that attracts out. This is just the one where it has a little stinger lift that drops down and the articulating forks. But once this thing's all done, it will be for sale. Uh, I have talked to a couple buddies of mine that are Swiss and German RC machine builders. One works for Liburg. Uh, they told me approximately if once this thing's all built and complete and if it's in functioning order and can take a little bit of abrasion, this machine should, this RC car should go for about $11,000. So. We'll see once we get it all done i'll figure on my price once i want to go sell it but you, you definitely do have to have some skill talent i mean all the brake lights are all been gusted it out i already have the plastic inserts for them the paint is i mean baby smooth there's no pores no nothing so but yep yeah, this is a sneak peek on my custom rc i'll get you guys back to the jeep but yeah, anything you guys need custom built. I do dashboards, uh, the Bluetooth, all that kind of stuff. So if you guys are looking for a custom fabricator, just hit me up. Uh, I am independently owned and operated as a company, so you don't have to worry about going through Joe, Bob, and reference from me. All right, we'll get back to the Jeep here real quick. All right, we're back to the Jeep. As you guys can see, I am not lying. Yeah, those fucking window seals are disgusting, but as you can see, this it's all fucking painted tar patch. All the road tar. Someone painted over it right before they sold the car. Try to cover up that black freaking tar splatter. But literally, this is the only rust I am dealing with. Which this is where the cab joins to the firewall and the wheel well. The Chrysler did not design this little corner very well so you can see how the after the assembly line they put that after spray on i like to prime it to see where all my bleed is coming from all the rust bleed that's a trick to the trade to any of you guys out there trying to figure out how where all your rust is coming from prime everything put a primer over everything and then soak the shit out of everything make sure you leave it in a dry environment so as the stuff dries off you'll see where all the bleeding is coming from as you can see, that's where all the bleeding's coming from, so obviously I have to rip this patch right off. As you see, I started picking at it, which confirmed that that's where the rust was coming from, so I rip all that off, strip it down, prime it, neutralize it, paint it, and we are golden, and that will be cured 100%. But as you guys can see, this vehicle is in actually really good shape. We bought it with almost 200,000 miles on it. We only got a couple thousand on it before the engine decided to quit. But, yep, and we already have some of the performance parts have already started coming in. Look at that. Got a Mallory ITR pulley. Got the valve covers are already in. Got some of the, we got the performance rig and alternator already over there. I got a buddy of mine that gutted out an airbox for me. So, yeah, that airbox is actually going to be gutted with the snorkel port on it. So that way later on I can have a little snorkel vent on the vehicle. Other than that, I am very meticulous with my vehicle, so stay tuned and we'll be uh, getting a little bit further on this project a little bit later on. Stay tuned.